Hey guys, this is part two of intensity modulated radiation therapy. In part one, I talked about the key features of IMRT, which are non-uniform intensity and inverse planning. Link is in this video description. There are several ways for delivering IMRT. Uh, we have conventional IMRT with MLCs. We have rotational IMRT, example, our tomotherapy, if we met with, with MLCs, compensators. In this presentation, I'm going to focus in ways to deliver IMRT with MLCs because they are the most frequently used delivery mechanism with Linux. So once the optimizer computes the fluence maps, a leaf sequence algorithm needs to be applied to convert the fluence maps into deliverable MLC patterns. The leaf sequence algorithm for step and shoot will create MLC patterns that when superimposed will deliver the dose for that field. So we have multiple subfields as we can see here once the leaf sequence algorithm is applied. We have multiple subfields which they are, when superimposed, for, uh, they have the, those distribution for that field. Characteristic for a step and shoot uh, is beam is on hold when MLCs are moving, and when the beam is on, the MLCs are not moving. Another delivery, treatment delivery option with fixed entry is to use dynamic MLC or sliding window. There, opposing leaves slide simultaneously in one direction only, each with a different velocity as a function of time. A characteristic of sliding window is that beam is on while the leaves are moving. So let's take a look at this short video here. We will see the leaves moving, opposing leaves moving in one direction only. And uh, as it was said, each with a different velocity as a function of time. Rotational IMRT, it's another option of treatment delivery in IMRT. Uh, it was first introduced by you in 1995. It was called Intensity Modulated Arc Therapy, IMAT. In IMAT, the beam is on while gantry and MLCs move continuously. Modulation is created by overlapping arcs. Uh, I'm at pros is that we have more options for the optimizer to deliver the dose, which result in less modulation when compared to conventional IMRT. Cons is that it requires the use of several superimposed arcs to achieve a good dose distribution. Nowadays, we have uh, VMAT, which is Volumetric Modulated Arc Therapy. Uh, it was first introduced by Oat in 2007 as a modified version of IMAT, a form of single arc IMAT. With VMAT, satisfactory dose distribution can be achieved with a single arc. It doesn't need several arcs anymore. Uh, Remat requires a precise synchronization of Linac Gantry rotation with MLC motion and radiation delivery. A characteristics of Vmat are dose rate, Gantry rotation speed, the treatment aperture shape varies. Optimizer needs to know maximum Gantry speed, MLC characteristics, dose rate, prescription dose. Treatment time will depend on maximum gantry speed, maximum MLC leaf speed, and dose rate. With VMAT or IMRT, conventional IMRT, we will have many contours. So we have to uh, have protocols, atlas to follow, guidelines. Uh, we can use RTOG atlas here, ICRU 83 recommendations. Energies uh, recommendations are 10x or less. That's to avoid the neutrons production and because they have tighter penumbra. Plan evaluation, do a visual inspection, inspect those distribution slice by slice, look for field entrance and exit those in critical organs, uh, check emus per field or per arc. And uh, here, uh, when you compare VMAT to conventional IMRT, 
Uh, we will see that the VMAT uses less MU, which is uh, one advantage of VMAT over conventional MRT. Evaluate and report cumulative uh, dose volume histogram, check PTV coverage, max dose and mean dose, hotspot location, organs at risk, uh, look for max dose, especially for serious structures, uh, percentage dose volume uh, or absolute dose with percentage volume or percentage dose with absolute volume. Check all of them, it depends on the, what you're treating and the dose per fraction you are using. Uh, planning recommendations with VMAT planning, uh, average two arcs, partial or full. Um, it's going to depend of, of your target size, the location of the target, the location of the critical structures. Use different collimator rotation for each arc because it reduces MLC tongue and groove effect and the interleaf transmission. For convention, IMRT or simply uh, IMRT, uh, we use four to nine fields, beam separation greater than 15 degree, avoid parallel post beams. And that's a recommendation of AAPM uh, for parallel post beams, according to them in conventional IMRT, do not show a significant beam shape potential. It, it increases those spillage outside the target. But keep in mind that the, these are only recommendations. You as a planner can weigh the pros and cons of following these recommendations for each case. Plan, as far as plans comparing IMRT versus 3D, the conventional IMRT. Uh, these advantages are of conventional IMRT are higher mills per field. Uh, that will uh, cause higher leakage radiation, longer treatment time, and with longer treatment time, we have higher intrafraction motion because the patient will be there on the couch for uh, much more time. Uh, IMRT or VMAT plans disadvantages where, when compared to 3D, we have more planning times, several contours, more complex QAs, higher integral dose. So why, with so many disadvantages, why we use intensity modulated radiation therapy? Because of the advantages, we have more conformal dose distribution, especially for complex targets. We have better normal tissue sparing, way better. Uh, and that is pretty much the biggest advantage of IMRT VMAT versus 3D we have better normal tissue sparing. And with both, we can do dose escalation. Uh, it's with dose escalation, it's extremely important to reduce systematic and random errors, to have a good machine in patient QA in place and a good IGRT system. Everything together will allow high doses to be precisely delivered to the target. Those are the sources I use it, and this is it, guys. Thanks for watching.